Hi, I'm Lou Kios, a member of Winyard Group's Advisory Council. As a former police chief and assistant director of the FBI, I want to introduce you to a technology that I believe will have a major impact on law enforcement. The reason to consider this tool is simple. It can help you solve crimes faster and make your city, county, or state safer. The question is, how does it do that? Well, it does that by using information you currently have and letting you analyze it in ways you couldn't do before. You can see the relationships automatically between all sorts of entities, suspects, guns, phone calls, text messages, and much, much more. With this knowledge, you can create a picture within seconds instead of literally taking days or weeks using manual processes. Why consider using this software? Well, for me, it's very simple because it's affordable, fast to deploy, and easy to use. This case is about gun crime and using ballistic data. But this technology can be used for almost any type of crime or threat you can name. Please watch this. Many law enforcement agencies already have a number of initiatives in place focused on reducing gun crime. Winyard Advanced Crime Analytics can enhance these current processes by leveraging the power of advanced analytics and multiplying the value of your data and resources. Imagine if agencies were able to access, incorporate, and analyze NIBIN and eTrace results in the click of a button. Imagine if they could see ballistics data linked to incident reports, arrest records, call logs, LPR data, and more. Imagine how quickly that agency could then identify trigger pullers, uncover associations, and dismantle criminal networks before the next shooting occurs. Let's take a look at how this technology can make that scenario a reality. I'm going to begin my investigation with the recovery of a firearm. This gun may have been recovered during a traffic stop, while serving a warrant, or under other similar circumstances. I'll search for this object in the top right-hand corner in my entity search bar. IntelliSense will help me narrow down my results until I find the entity of choice and drop it into my graph. This instance of a gun actually represents the occurrence of the same weapon as it's referenced across multiple sources. That information is represented here in my left-hand entity viewer panel. I can see the weapon was referenced in eTrace request and results as well as a test fire request which links to my NIBIN data and an impound report which details the recovery of the gun. The first thing I might want to do to explore this data is going to be to execute one of my custom-built queries, which will help me to explore the data associated with my NIBIN and eTrace results. From here, I can quickly see that this weapon has been linked to a previously recorded homicide case via confirmed NIBIN hit between my test fire shell casing and one that was recovered at the scene of the crime. To further this information, if I click on the case number here, I can see connections to other entities, including the source impound report, as well as all of the people, places, and things that are contained within the text of that document, which is a feature that I will detail in just a moment. For now, let's take a look at the impound report to determine who the gun actually belonged to. I can see that the person of interest in my impound report is listed as Juan Santa Cruz, so let's drag him to my graph for further investigation. When I click on Juan, much like the case report in the one I clicked on earlier, I can see all of my reports in which Juan is referenced, whether that's coming from my RMS system, third-party reports, bank statements, or call records, as well as important details about him that may link to more additional entities of interest, like his address or gang affiliation. More nuanced details of Juan can be found in his Properties tab, like his height and eye color. Now that I can see that Juan has an extensive record in this department, he may become my chief suspect. However, it turns out that Juan actually has a pretty airtight alibi, so perhaps my next move is to determine how he came in possession of a murder weapon. My e-trace is telling me that Erica Crevier was actually the original gun purchaser, so let's take a look at the interview that's attached to her name. If I double-click on the document, you can see how Advanced Crime Analytics uses entity extraction engines to automatically comb through the text and extract critical entities that may be overlooked. For instance, here Erica states that she bought the weapon in question for her boyfriend, Arturo Galagos Castrolon. This could very well indicate his status as a potential prohibited person, and perhaps even as an arms dealer, so I'll drop him into my graph as well. Now I want to verify whether these two individuals actually know each other. I'll use a query that finds indirect links between call record data.
This has surfaced a common contact, Mario Pena, which is yet another known offender, leading me to believe that they may be part of some larger criminal network. As a final check, I'm going to search for connections between Arturo and the victim, Carlos Perez. Rather than search specifically through call data, I want to broaden my inquiry to cover any connection to any depth via any combination of data sources. Now I can see that Arturo is linked to Perez via an old impound report against Arturo's record, which contained a vehicle that matches the description of the car reported at the scene of the crime of Perez's murder. Because no plate was captured at that time, I want to check the plates of the vehicle on Arturo's impound report by dragging this plate to a new graph. Now I can see that the plate is linked to several license plate reader cameras. If I select each of these and drop them into a map, I can find where Arturo was at any given point in time. If I turn on my timeline filter here, and tune to the day of the murder, which was March 17th, I can see exactly where Arturo was at that particular time. Now, if I search for Coco Bongo nightclub, the scene of the crime, and drop it into my map, I can quickly see that Arturo was in fact at the scene of the crime when the murder took place and was actually quickly moving away from that particular incident. You can also visualize the same data on a timeline. We can get some more details about the specific times that Mario was located at each different place. Now as I return to my original graph, you can see how advanced crime analytics has not only helped to close the loop on an open investigation, but also helped to prevent future crime by identifying emerging criminal networks. All of this can be accomplished by unlocking the real value of data you already have in your possession. Thank you.